from someone who has been precepted as a nurse aide, an LPN, and an RN, and who has also precepted nurse aides, LPNs, and RNs, one of the things that's very like clearly obvious by this is that there's a lot of bad preceptors out there. And um, the other thing as well is that being a good preceptor doesn't come naturally and actually takes a lot of some skills that you might actually have to work on to be able to make sure that the nurse, nurse aide, or whoever it is that you're precepting is actually getting a good experience and is learning something from you. So in this video, I'm going to give you some good 10 tips to help you to not suck as a nurse preceptor. Hey everybody, this is Thomas from nursemoneytalk.com where I help nursing students become nurses and nurses excel in their nurse career and nurse life. And like I've already mentioned in this video, I really just wanna talk about really in general how to not suck as a nurse preceptor. At this point, I mean, I've been, I've worked at you know several different facilities. Um, I've even within those several facilities, I've worked in several different departments in different capacities. So I've been precepted a fair bit. Um, and I've also done my fair share of precepting. And, you know, one of the things that's really evident is that precepting is not easy. And also there's a lot of work that comes with it and also a lot of kind of like thought that comes that comes with it. If you think about it, what is the purpose of a preceptor? Really your purpose is honestly twofold. I, I honestly, I kind of really say three, but let's stick with, with two and then I'll throw in the third one is one, your teacher. You're teaching that nurse, that nursing student what they need to know to be successful. Um, if you look at it in the instance of like you have a new grad nurse and we know that new grad nurses, they know a lot of things, but we also know that there's a lot more things that they don't know. And so our job as a nurse preceptor is to teach them what they don't know to a lesser degree, but still just as important to the new nurses who, who are coming into your facility, to your department, who have experiences, who have um, a, like previous nursing experience. The second part of that is that you're a mentor. And I think not always, but I think a lot of good preceptor, like, you know, preceptorship duos and relationships actually will extend outside whatever your eight weeks, 12 weeks or whatever, whenever that's done. I think a lot of good relationships will extend outside of that because you end up being kind of like a resource person. You become kind of like an informal, maybe like a go-to person that if they have any questions, any concerns, then potentially they might want to address it with you or hopefully, you know, they can address that with you. One of the other things that, that I that I feel like comes with, you know, kind of going on that mentorship route is that you get to a point where like you're teaching them, you're mentoring them on things that that might not necessarily be like obvious. So like so instances of things are like who are the informal leaders on the unit or at the facility? Who are the difficult doctors, like how does this X, Y, and Z person um, react or respond or maybe like a frequent patient that, that goes in and out of the facility who's maybe that's difficult to deal with. Maybe they have family members that are difficult to deal with. You know, just kind of like stuff like that where like it's not like what I would say like facility policy per se, but at the same time, it ends up being crucial to like kind of like to that um, to that individual nurse's like success at that facility. The next thing I want to talk about is what are um, the qualities of a good nurse preceptor. And so, as you can see, like some of the you know here are just kind of like some of the qualities of a good nurse preceptor. So you're looking at somebody who is patient, you know, especially like and and I know I'm using. Um, 
I'm using like the new grad nurse scenario a, a lot, but you know, this also goes to as well, like if you're precepting somebody, like a nurse who's not a new grad, but is just new to your facility. It's just, I feel like the, it's more pronounced. A lot of this is more pronounced with a new grad nurse, but like patients, there's a lot of things they don't know. Like the person you're precepting, they don't all learn the exact same way. They don't all learn at the exact same speed. So you're going to have to be patient to be able to then deal with that person in a certain way or at a certain speed that they learn. Um, you gotta be open to maybe changing up what you're doing a little bit. You know, what works for one new preceptee might not work the same for another one. You know, you have to be willing to listen and maybe change up what you're doing. Gotta be fair, good organizational skills. I mean, I've been precepted by nurses who are not very organized. And I'm not saying that like, you know, like to be a good preceptor, that you have to be like the most organized person in the world. But something to keep in mind is that it really makes it hard to get your point across if it's not organized and laid out in a good manner to where it can be easily received. So in other words, if you're all over the place, especially if your thought process and your teachings are all over the place, it can be really hard for that nurse that you're precepting to follow. Clear communication. Communication, um, good communication being that like, is that person able to receive the information you want them to receive in the intended manner that you want it? So essentially, um, you want that person to, to you want to get across to that person exactly what you wanted them wanted to get across. A willingness to learn. You are going to be learning as a preceptor. New nurses, especially even new grad nurses, they're going to bring things, especially like if you've been a nurse for 10, 20 plus years, like that new nurse who's coming right out of school, they could pro they're probably going to teach you a thing or two because like they just got out of school. So what they learn um, especially if you're not keeping up to date with the most latest evidence-based practice, they're probably up to speed on a lot of the best, pra the, the current best practice. It also helps um, if you have a lot of knowledge yourself, because like if you have a lot of no knowledge, you have a lot of experience that you bring to the table. You know, just it makes it it makes it easier, I think, overall, because they're going to be asking you a lot of questions, and I think it just makes it easier and probably like less frustrating for everybody in involved because you know they'll ask you a question and then you could potentially then get frustrated because while well, they're asking me a question and I don't know what it is, why do they keep asking me questions? Just kind of like that that type of that type of thing. Um, and honestly, that's pro that one's actually from experience because like I'm the type of person that asks a lot of questions. And so I've been in situ I've been in situations where someone's teaching me and you know wasn't trying to be difficult, wasn't trying to be whatever. So I'm just I'm I'm trying to learn. Like I I like to learn about all the different facets of whatever it is you're you're trying to teach me. Started asking her some questions and then it she quickly became frustrated because she just kept saying, I don't know, I don't know, Thomas, I, I don't know, why are, you, why are you asking me all these questions? Just stop asking me, like, this is the way you're supposed to do it, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, uh, just like, oh. I'm like, okay, all right, I'll, I won't ask you any more questions. And then the other, you know, two other things I think is the ability to make learning fun. I mean, I'm not, say, not saying that, um, that you're there to entertain them, obviously we all have jobs to do. I think this is worth at least kind of thinking about it a little bit. And also, um, I think it really shows when you are actually excited about your job, when you are just motivated, like it comes off, like it becomes very obvious. And I think it easily displays to the other person. Like excited about your job, I mean, that's, you know, that's really kind of, um, hard to fake. So what are kind of like some top tips for when, when you're precepting a new nurse? Num you know, number one is just introduce the, the new nurse um, or whichever nurse you're precepting to the unit culture. And what I mean by that is that either, like especially if it's a very positive culture where 
um, you know, everybody's, um, you know, always willing to help, you know, like, you know, people like you're not alone. Like there's always somebody willing to just tag it and help you. Let me help you get this. Let me help you do that. You're walking around. Like there was one unit where I worked that, where it was very commonplace to just have ner other nurses, just like when they have a break, they would actually walk around asking other people, Hey, do you need, do you need help? Do you, you know, is there anything I can, I can help you with? And stuff like that, where like you can get that new nurse acclimated to like, Hey, this is we're we're a team, team players in this unit. Like, this is what we do. This is the, this is just the, the norm. So when you have nurses who don't feel like they fit in, what ends up happening is that essentially like you can have a situation where retention goes down. You might say this is a like facility problem. I mean, this is not, this is not a facility problem. I mean, it is a facility problem, but at the same time, this is also a your problem as well, because if retention goes down and you have a bunch of people, you know, a bunch of nurses leaving, a bunch of techs leaving or whatever, then that means you're probably going to be working a lot of shifts more short staff than you already are. So I think it's to your benefit to help new hires fit in, help new grad nurses fit in teaching the basics. And the thing about this is just, I think it's best to not assume that the new hire knows everything. If you know what I mean, I think like, especially when you're starting from the ground level with the, with the new hire, I think it's always good to really just kind of take an assessment of what they really do know. I'm not saying like sit here and just keep hammering the basics. That's, that's just a waste of your time, their time. And it's gonna, you know, irritate them. But I'm just saying like, you need to maybe like, Hey, like, I don't know if you know how to, um, start an IV, but I can show you, I can, you know, start one kind of teach you the basics. Um, if you, you know, if, if you want, I think so kind of like a question like that, where, where essentially like you're not putting them on the spot. You're not making them feel bad. You're just kind of like telling them like, Hey, you know, I can go over these basics with you. No pressure, no, you know, no, whatever. But if you already know it, then, then that's fine too. Time management. This is, this one I think is, is very crucial. Um, because I think one of the things about different areas of our specialties of nursing is that they all have kind of like their own different time management. And I feel like that, that that'll make sense if you've worked in different areas. I know a lot of times um, med search is the one that typically call, uh, comes up when people are talking about having good time management and, and rightfully so for a lot of reasons, but you know, if you're thinking about like, whether it is the, the ER, like the ICUs med, you know, med search, whether you're doing, um, case management or home health or whatever, there's things that you can teach them because a lot of times, um, when it comes to time management, what ends up really being the important thing about it is priority prioritization and helping them learn, um, you know, these are the things that really take precedence on when you're dealing, when you're on this unit or the, this floor, or, um, these are the things that, that really takes priority when you're dealing with these particular types of patients, um, or issues. So that's, I think what's the big thing with the time management, the number four, keeping judgment, criticism far away. Criticizing doesn't really help. It can put people on the defensive, giving constructive feedback, like feedback with, with that your intention is not to put down or to belittle the person, but your intention is to, Hey, this, um, I noticed that you were doing X, Y, and Z facility policy actually says you should, you know, that it needs to be done this way for this particular reason to where you're not criticizing them, you're giving them constructive kind of like feedback, something they can actually something, you know, almost kind of tangible that they can work with. I think it's also important to acknowledge that unfortunately there are certain people where you could give the most constructive of feedbacks 
you could say it in the most nicest way and they're going to get defensive about it. That is a thing, but I think the main thing though is to is to do some own your own self-reflection on that and make sure that how you're delivering those feedbacks are in a constructive manner. I'll put in in the descriptions um, in the description below a link to an article that that we wrote that really talks about um, just kind of like how you can give constructive feedback when it comes to nursing. Number five is just kind of watching out for cockiness and just kind of like prideful attitude. And this goes a lot of different ways. I mean, I think there's a lot of different things that can be um, put in this, but one couple things I'd point out is that there's a difference between being confident in what you know and being arrogant about it. One thing as well with this is being able to, to acknowledge when, when you're wrong. I think this goes a, a, a long way for people being able to just kind of respect you when they're, you know, when you're precepting them as well. So number six is really just about making your expectations um, clear. As a preceptor, you really do set the tone. You set the tone for the day um, and you really set the tone for what their entire um, orientation is going to be like. So something to keep in mind is that it helps if your manager hasn't already done something like this, um, setting like dates out. So like by this week, I want you to be able to do X, Y, and Z. By this week, I want you to be able to start taking patients with minimal supervision. At this week, I'm going to let you do the, the full thing. I'm just gonna step back and just be a resource to you. I think being able to set, um, you know, make clear expectations, I think really helps in terms of um, allowing your preceptee to be able to kind of have goals goals out or goals written out that they, they, they can work towards. Number seven is just being personable. I feel like for this one, just simply just be a pleasant person to be around. I, that's really the main thing um, because I've had preceptors where, um, you know, their attitude was, they never said this, but their attitude was, you know, I don't, I don't want to be doing this. Like you are, you know, you're a waste of my time. Like you're a waste, you know, I just, I don't want to be precepting anybody. And you know, that may or may not be true. And I'll get to that later. You know, I think if you're really striving to be a good preceptor and make sure the other person has a good experience and ideally is, um, you know, ends up staying on and being retained by the facility um, or by, you know, by your department, then I think you, you can make a big difference in that. And a lot of it is just um, being personable. The next thing, number eight is just encourage independence when, when appropriate. So I think with this different nurses have not even just nurses, but like different people in general, just have like different ways they, they learn. Some people are more hand-holding. They want you to not literally hold their hands, obviously, but they want, you know, they want you to be nearby um, through the entire thing. Other people at some point, they're gonna want you to leave them alone. And what I mean by that is, I'm not just saying like, just like, oh, wait, I mean, that's, you know, because that's clearly still your, you know, as, until they're off orientation, you know, that's still your patient as well. But what I mean is get to a point where like, if possible, and I've seen some preceptors are just phenomenal at this. Um, and, I've, and I think certain, you know, depending on where you're at will allow you more to, to do this than others is be able to kind of um, step back, you know, once of course they've gone through basics and you know, whatnot, and you're confident in what they're doing. Of course, um, we're not, you know, obviously we're not trying to put patients in risky positions or risky situations, but you know, just being able to step back and just kind of, you know, watch them from afar, if you will, while you're still watching exactly what they're doing. I remember there was one, um, one particular um, uh, preceptor who like, um, she, so she was precepting me 
And and I remember like um, from the start of the shift, it it seemed like she was like hardly around. So I went in, I was like, you know, doing what I was doing, like I'm by like hardly around, like she was there. I feel like I'm I'm like um, <laughs> kind of butchering the story, but um, but my my point being that like she was there. But she stepped back and she was watching me. She was still watching. I mean, later after I talked to her, she was still watch. She was watching me. She was where she could see me. She was still keeping. She was keeping up with the orders, or at least watching the orders to make sure I was keeping up with it. So she was like, in a way, um, watching every single thing I was doing without like, like feeling like, um, like you know that. She was watching everything I was doing while at the same time allowing me to be able to get a little bit of independence and be able to set my own rhythm. Because like the one thing I want to bring up about this is that you want your preceptee to be able to set their own rhythm. And what I mean by that is like, cause I've had preceptors who like, they wanted like, I had to do it their way or the highway. And you know, and what I, and you know, it's one thing if it's a patient safety issue, it's one thing if it's a, like a facility policy or some kind of rule um, policy, that is something completely different. It's another thing where like literally like you, you have a preference. This needs to be done this way. It's like you have a tunnel vision and there's no safety thing involved. There's no nothing involved. Like it could be done a million other ways and still be fine and safe and within the rules and guidelines and, and whatnot. But it needs to be done your one way. That is something I think you should watch out for because then you're doing a hard time then because that makes it difficult to encourage the other person to get a little bit of their independence, to get a little bit of, of their own rhythm for how they're doing things because people think differently and people see things differently and they could necessarily all be right, but then there's just different path. Like, like for example, you could have the same goal and have different paths to get to that goal and those different paths all be safe and within the rules or whatever. So so just kind of be careful for that because those, I remember those particular times were very frustrating for me because like, I, it just, it made it difficult because the way they were, they were wanting me to do it just really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, you know, so it just made a frustrating and difficult orientation. And guess what? Guess what happened once I was once I was done with that? I went back and, and started trying to do it, you know, do it my way. But then I, you know, while I was in precept, while I was still in orientation, I could have had a more of a rhythm down, but instead it was after the orientation that I was starting to get that rhythm. So that's just something to be careful about. Um, I think daily briefings um, are really good. And you know, that kind of goes hand in hand with just kind of like asking for feedback because with the daily uh, briefings, you'll ask them like, hey, you know, so did you get how to do X, Y, and Z? Do you have any questions over X, Y, and Z? Is there anything I can help you with? Is there anything you're struggling with? And I think that can make a big difference if you can get some time to do those daily briefings because I think um, in the midst of actually during the day and trying to do catch up and everything at times, like, you know, you could be a situation where you're just doing, 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 but you know, your preceptee could have a ton of questions and maybe not even understand why they're doing what they're doing. And I think helping them get to the understanding of why really helps them in terms of making sure that they actually learn it. And daily briefings help. Um, you know, also in that daily briefings, you can also ask for feedback. You know, how do you think this is going? Um, you think it's going well? Um, is there any way I can I can help you be more successful. 
Um, you know, and I think with, with this feedback, it helps you to be able to then kind of see, okay, maybe there's a, you know, there might be a couple things I need to change up as well, like how I'm doing. Two things I wanted to bring up. One of them is already on here. The other one is not, but I will write it here. The first one is, um, know when to pass on precepting. Um, and I, and I understand that I think in certain situations in certain facilities or department that might be easier said than done. But if you know, um, that you're just not going to be good at it for whatever reason, either, you know, you're not at a good point in time mentally or whatever the case may be to be able to do it then I think this would be a situation where probably talking to your, um, to your manager to maybe find somebody else to do it. Because I think going and accepting a precepting position when you're not going to do a good job, that's a, it, it's a disservice to you, to the new hire, and also to your department as well. The next thing I wanted to talk about is, and the last point is the, is um, another bonus tip, which is um, encourage. Um, I think encouragement can go a long way. Um, encouraging them like, hey, you're, you know, Sally, you're doing a really good job. Hey, John, like, you know, I, I appreciate the work that you're doing here. We're glad that you're on the team. Yeah, some of you might look at it and say like, oh, that that's just silly. Honestly, like, this is how I look at it. And this has always been my viewpoint whenever, um, whenever I see a new, a new hire is I try to take an interest in that, that new hire to, in the sense of like, you know, I'll ask them like, Hey, how are you doing? You know, are you doing okay? Do you need help with anything? Can I help you with X, Y, and Z? Like just trying to encourage them. You see them like that they're upset over, maybe they messed, they made a mistake or something like that. Be like, Hey, you know, Kurt, hey, you're, you know, so it's John, it's, it's, you know, it's fine. Not a, you know, not a big deal. The problem was resolved, you know, something, something like that to where like you can, um, you can honestly like make them feel excited to want to show up to work, make them feel like, okay, I thought this new facility that I might not like it. I thought I might not like this new department, but man, everybody here is like nice, super helpful. They're encouraging. Yeah, I guess I might be around here for, for, for a cool minute. I mean, you know, it's just stuff like that. I think goes a long way. But this is the other thing. Even if like you are just the type of person that you don't give a crap. You don't care about the other person. You don't care about like being kind, being friendly. Then you know what? You just don't care. I will then say this, then think about it from a selfish perspective. Then if you just don't want to be kind then think about it from a selfish perspective that if you retain the new hire, that's good for you. <laughs> that's good for you. Like you, you know, that helps you on a short staffing front. So either way, you know, either if you're trying to be like kind to other people or you don't give a crap and you know, you're just more concerned about yourself. I still feel like the end result should be the exact same because at the end of the day, you want to keep the new hires around. It's not just even keeping the new hires. You want to keep the good ones around because that ultimately makes life so much easier on you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button because that really does help us in terms of making sure that other nurses um, sees this video in the YouTube, um, YouTube feed. In one of these videos, you'll see that shows up right here. I'm going to go over from the other side of things. And that's like how you deal with a difficult preceptor. So if you happen to be watching this and you're not a preceptor, but you're about to be a preceptee, then that video is definitely the one you want to check out. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you very soon in the next one.